Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I want to thank everybody for their wonderful feedback and ideas for more articles and videos and for your continued support. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. This is a very simple um, scenario, but it can get quite carried away very fast. And I hope you're going to find this useful. And I, I stress to network analysts or anybody in the technology field to get a little bit outside of their comfort zone, look for ways to make their job a little bit easier. So that's where this came into play. And it's monitoring Windows services for free. So the scenario, while troubleshooting, we needed a free, quick, and easy way to monitor a Windows task. That's the key, right? All the products I found were very limited, or you had to pay for the full version. And this was just a one-off scenario. It is a smaller company, so I just needed something quick and simple. This is just like a one-off thing, right, to help me troubleshoot. Ideally, we would like to also have an alert sent via email to us so we don't have to constantly check the system for errors. And you'll see why that's helpful in just a minute. So I created a Windows batch file. This is on a Windows system. And I used send email.exe to accomplish this. All the people who know Linux will find a way to do this with a bash script as well. So send emails at this website here, the URL, and I'll put that in the notes for you. So you can just click on it, go get it. It's free and it runs from the command prompt. So it's a good little utility to have. So the computer software information, it's on a Windows 8 machine. And I use that send mail command line utility. That's the key, right? When you have, right? When you write a batch file, you want to be able to use an application that you can run from the command line, possibly pass some parameters or variables to it, and that way you don't have this GUI pop up and you have to interact with it. So the batch file overview. So I put send email.exe in the same folder as the batch file just to make things easy. You don't need to do that. It's just what I did. I created this file tasklist.txt and it's going to have all the tasks that are running using the Microsoft task list command. Then text file is searched, right? I use find st, find string to search it. And then from there, if it fails, if there's no file, if there's no task in the file, an email sent. If the task is in the file, then we just go on, life is good. So here's what the batch file actually looks like. So the very first line, cd change directory, and this is where the actual batch file is. I find depending on the scheduler you use, sometimes you should specify the folder where everything is just to make sure so it doesn't default to systems or the application folder or that kind of thing, right? So just to be sure, this is what I did. If you do have a path or a directory or a folder name with spaces, then put double quotes around it. Then I did this cool little thing, echo, and you'll see this date time. So this is going to display, that's what echo means, the date and the time and it's going to put it into this text file. So the very top of the text file, I will see the date and I will see the time, which is helpful to know. Then the task list command is executed and I use the double greater than, that's not a typo, there's two greater than signs, that means append. So I'm appending the task list to the text file. So I have the date and the time and then I have a list of all the tasks. That's it, simple. So this is the way it looks. So you'll see there's our first line, as you can see the date and the time, and then there is the output from that task list command. A lot of people didn't even know this was in Windows 8, to be honest with you, which always kind of makes me chuckle because I follow all this kind of nerdy stuff. So batch file details. So the first thing we do, find string slash m and then chrome.exe is the task I'm looking for in this list. And there it is, chrome.exe, and that's what I'm looking for, right? So it'll search this file and then it's either going to return a 0 or a 1. If it's a 0, that means it exists. So that's what this means. That means it exists and I just put a little echo, display, command line is up, right? Or Chrome is up or whatever you want to have display on your screen. It's a diagnostic thing in case you happen to look at it or when you're first testing your batch file. So then the next thing is if error level is equal to 1 that means it's not there. So then I can say echo chrome is down. And then you can also send your email, that sort of thing. So now on to the email. You'll see send email and it looks fairly overwhelming but it's not. Um, the dash F is from, so you can put your from email address. U is a subject line, chrome is down. M is the message, you can do that. Uh, with send email you can also do a um, uh, an attachment, 
dash a which you'll see as well so you can actually have like a log file or something else if you want to do that dash s is your smtp server off you go and obviously i specified a port that is non-standard by default then we have xu is the user login xp is the user password and then obviously i attached that text file so i could see all the tasks that were running at that time so anybody uh, who's looking at this right now can say, oh, wow, cool. So then I can also ping and put that in the file. I can do traceroute and put that in the file. I can do ARP and put that in the file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, do, you can add on as much as you want. Please don't get too carried away because you're going to have to eventually go through this. But whatever you find helpful, yeah, just go ahead. Keep adding it to your little shopping list of stuff you want to do. So the final script looks like this because it looks a little messy with all my notes. So again, we find the string Chrome in that text file we created. If it's zero, it's up, right? And again, I use command line, but you can put Chrome. You can do whatever you want. I like to put totally different things just so it catches my attention when I'm using, to, when I'm first diagnosing my script, making sure it works, debugging it. Then obviously we're going to find it again. If it's one, Chrome is down. And sometimes you're able to not uh, deal with this command and you can lump them all together. If then all that kind of stuff. I know this is a little extra, but this is more clear, clearer for the people that may not be familiar to writing a batch file. For the people who do write a batch file, you could probably do all of this in three lines, right? But that's not what this is about. So there's our sample email, and you'll see it says it's from home at the tech firm, Chrome is down. And then you'll see there's my task list that I attached, so I can actually see what was going on when the actual task failed. So that's it. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.